Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the channel. Right, today I'm going to have a little ramble about this band. It's got all the albums, by the way, Beat or Brad, from One Step Beyond to Can't Touch Us Now. Um, this is why I'm making this video. Our good friend Beat or Brad over in America asked about madness and what sort of bits I've got. Well, Madness was the band I absolutely loved. First, My first proper love were the Sex Pistols when I was 13. But uh, I got to 14 years old. I was a little bit of a late starter with Madness. Um, it wasn't the initial One Step Beyond, although I loved them and My Girl in the charts. But it was the single baggy trousers that hooked me. And the rest is history. Um, and obviously during that time growing up, you didn't have the easy access to music that you have now. So literally you'd have to go out, buy the single, or possibly on a Sunday evening, record it from Radio 1. Uh, you know, the top 50, 20 or whatever, I can't even remember what it was now. But anyway, during this time, I actually created probably the best singles box ever. But alas... When I moved out from home and I fell on hard times when I lived in South End, I sold them. And I had every single up till Waiting for a Ghost Train by Madness uh, from The Prince. And all the picture discs as well. Tomorrow's just another day. Uh, Our House. I think, yeah. There was quite a few um, driving in my car. Um, yeah. And obviously. I've done a little ramble on this before, but um, when Madness brought out the album Complete Madness, um, I was 16 years old. It was my 16th birthday. They released the album about a week or so before. I've done a video on this anyway, eh, but it's not a very good video, mind. And I, we didn't have a record shop. I lived up north at the time in a little place called Not End, um, and the record shop was in Fleetwood, so I had to get a ferry across on my 16th birthday with my pocket money, fiver. I oh, know, right? And I bought the album Complete Madness when I got it home. Heard House of Fun for the first time. You all know House of Fun is about becoming 16 and the coming of age, you know. Um, so I always thought that was a puck a little thing, you know, just for me that was. Um, but yeah, and also, incidentally, that become Madness's only ever UK number one which is a bit sad, I think, because they've brought out some fantastic music. And you've only got to go to one of their concerts and you realise how many people absolutely adore them and love the, the classics. Um, now, but Beetlebread asked me what stuff I have. Um, not a lot, because like I said, I sold all that stuff many, many years ago. I mean, I was probably 22, you know. I oh, wish I'd have kept them now. But anyway... Um, some of the media I do have obviously is I've got the business which is the singles box and this goes all the way up from the prints, all A's and B sides all the way up to waiting for a ghost train I remember when that was on top of the pops and at the end Chrissy Boy and Bedders turned their guitars over and it said goodbye I was a little bit saddened by that and that's kind of where I tuned out for a while um but obviously I'll get to that in a little while, but 2009, I heard the Libby and Norton Fallgate. Oh, anyway, let me show you the rest of these first, and I'll get to that. Sorry about the noise. I decided to do this ramble downstairs, because obviously I've got my madness clock there, with all the albums going around, uh, cause 12, and obviously my signed picture from the band, and that's all of them signed it, uh, to Darren, and it's got all their autographs on it. Um, Madness the Lot, and that's every album up to Mad Not Mad. So that is One Step Beyond, Absolutely, Madness 7, The Rise and Fall. A very underrated Madness album, The Rise and Fall. Um, Keep Moving and Mad Not Mad. So that's kind of nice. I've got this was bought to me by Alice Plays Reactions quite a few years ago now. It's Divine Madness. 
uh, and it's got all the singles from Prince down to Love Struck and Johnny the Horse. But it was the disc two is a DVD, and it's got twenty eight music videos. Again, from the Prince to Drip Dead Fred, which is Ian Jury and the Ian Jury, not Ian Jury and the Blockheads, Ian Jury and Madness. How good is that combination? And obviously the Madness film, how they all sort of started from the North London Invaders to Madness. So, and that was also brought to me by Alice Plays Reactions. I'm starting to think, Alice, you buy me quite a lot of stuff, really. You're a good man, thanks. Um, so, 2009, I hadn't listened to Madness for a few years. I think it was, I missed out on the Madness album um, and Wonderful. But too far, oh, and the Danger Man sessions. I hadn't heard them, you know, because I kind of, after they, uh, waiting for a ghost train, I thought, you know, Madness was over, that era was over, and I kind of was listening to other bits and bobs then. I think I went full Beatles tilt by then. Um, but 2009, they brought out the Liberty and Norton Fallgate. So I bought the CD from the local shop thinking, oh, that looks kind of interesting. You know, that old sort of Edwardian style cover and had quite a lot of songs on it. Well, I was blown away. It's, to me, it's probably the best Madness album. Production wise, it tells a wonderful sort of story. It's just got that, it's beautiful. It's fish and chips, it's pie and mash, everything that, Britain is good at and madness this is their to me this is their Sergeant Pepper this is their Dark Side of the Moon it is amazing um, still not got it on vinyl though which is a little bit irritating because it was a gorgeous box set but I think it's quite expensive but I'll get to the vinyls in a little while so and all these years I hadn't actually seen madness so it was when I first got with my wife now and we went to Madstock number two in 2009 and got to see them. Went with a few friends, had a hell of a day, and they totally lived up to the expectations. Um, then again in 2009, they'd done a free concert down Regent Street in London. So we went down there, and we was quite up close and personal um, to the band, and that was amazing as well. And then we didn't see them until 2015, we went to Chelmsford, they'd done the Grand Slam, and that's the first time I heard the song, Grand Slam, by Madness, and that was awesome. And then, obviously, last year, as you know, me and wifey went to the House of Fun Weekender at Minehead. So that's two days of Madness, you know, two concerts, Friday night and Saturday night, um, and other bands and stuff on the Sunday. So, yeah, that's kind of... Oh, and also in 2009, I had a chance to meet... Lee Thompson, the saxophone player from Madness. And what a really nice gent he was. Uh, I was lucky enough to get my picture taken with him. I didn't have my memory card in my camera, so literally it was the little bit that was in the internal memory, which took one decent photo. How's your luck, Stripey? There you go, never mind. Anyway, so that's kind of like my Madness backstory, really condensed down. Um... I'll show you the few out. Um, I've got a lot to collect still, but I've got a few of their albums uh, on vinyl. Obviously, their debut album, One Step Beyond. It's fantastic, this is. Um, obviously, Mad, a lot of the songs from here were in the movie Dance Craze, um, which was a two tone movie. And Madness had one single on two tone, which was their debut single, The Prince. And uh, I think the B side was Madness. Madness, they call it madness. There he goes. Right. The next album I have is their second album. Absolutely. With, obviously, baggy trousers, embarrassment, um, take it or leave it, and the return of the Lost Palmer 7. <sighs> Apart from take it or leave it, I had all them on single. Yeah, never mind. Um, so that was their second album. Now, I haven't got Madness 7, The Rise and Fall, but they are on my wants list. I need to get them back, really. And the next one skips to the album I bought on my 16th birthday. 
complete madness. I love the cover on this. Do you know I spent hours looking at that? And hours. So that's that. And finally, we've got their latest album. Uh, you can't touch us now. Now this is without uh, Chaz Smash. He'd left by now, which is a bit saddened to me. I know the band probably won't get back, get him back now. You know. Um, but I always liked the band as a seven. He was the nutty dancer. Do you remember from uh, The Prince? Um, so yeah, that's kind of my madness story. And that's kind of all my madness media at the moment. But, you know, I've, I've got a little bit. And it can grow again. Alas, if I could have shown you them singles, it would have been a beautiful video. Because it was uh, all of them bands. It was from the movie Two Tone. Uh, Dance Craze, Two Tone. Um, the Specials, The Selector. Bad Manners, The Beat, uh, The Body Snatchers are Madness. All condensed into one box set. And the first, pretty much three, half of it was uh, two-tone and the rest pretty much was Madness. You know, but I did add all the ba Bad Manners singles and stuff as well. So anyway, he's rambling on. So that's kind of it, Brad. You know, I need to get some more Madness albums. I need to get a load more albums. But I'm finding it hard to find the time to uh, play and do these videos so but I thought I'd do this one down here in Saturday morning nice and easy still got my pyjama bottoms on it's waffling so that's it guys really um, do you like Madness what's your favourite song have you heard The Liberty and Alton Fallgate what do you think of it if you haven't heard it have a listen but a very, very good band and highly, highly recommended to go and see live. And I'm still toying with the idea because I've got some friends going to Minehead 2018. We'll just see how that pans out. I just may go. We'll see. Anyway, have yourselves a great day, guys.